Cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies have rapidly evolved over the past decade or so, leading to the creation of multiple layers within the blockchain ecosystem. These layers, each with their unique roles and functionalities, work together to enhance the efficiency, scalability and security of blockchain networks. In this video, we'll look at the various layers of blockchain technology. So layer zero, layer one, layer two, layer three, exploring their purposes, advantages, disadvantages, and examples of cryptocurrencies that operate within each layer. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. Just a reminder that nothing contained here is financial advice. And let's jump straight in and take a look at these different crypto layers. Blockchain and distributed ledger technology is essentially a decentralized ledger that records transactions across multiple computers or nodes, but also includes aspects such as cryptography, game theory, etc. This decentralized nature ensures security, immutability, and transparency. But as blockchain networks have grown, so has the need for more scalability and a more structured approach to managing the aspects of the crypto trilemma. So decentralization, security, and scalability. Hence, the concept of blockchain layers. These layers help organize and optimize the complex processes within blockchain networks that I've just mentioned, with the aim of making them more efficient and scalable. These layers include everything from the underlying infrastructure to the user-facing applications that you or I would see when transacting with crypto. Understanding these layers can help us understand how blockchain networks are built, maintained, and scaled in the crypto industry. So let's start with layer zero and what this is, because layer zero is often referred to as the infrastructure layer, it forms the foundational infrastructure of blockchain technology and the underlying technologies that support blockchain networks. So in other words, it's essentially the technology that allows Bitcoin, Ethereum and other blockchains or layer ones to work, which we'll look at next. But this layer zero encompasses the internet protocols, hardware and data centers that underpin the entire blockchain network and enable the operation and communication of blockchain systems. Think of it as essentially the backbone or infrastructure that supports all other layers, or maybe, in other words, as the roads and bridges that support the transportation network above it. It's responsible for ensuring that different blockchains can communicate with each other, thus promoting interoperability and scalability. Layer zero includes technologies like Polkadot, and Cosmos, which enable the seamless transfer of data and assets across different blockchains. So they basically connect multiple blockchains into one network. Advantages of layer zero therefore include interoperability as it facilitates communication between different blockchains as we've just seen, making it easier for them to interact. It also enables scalability because it enhances the overall capacity of the blockchain network by providing a solid foundation. However, some disadvantages of layer zero are that it is quite complex and challenging trying to manage and upgrade this infrastructure. And there could also be some security risks if there are any vulnerabilities at this layer because it can affect the entire system. Moving on now to layer one. Layer one includes the main blockchains often referred to as the base layer. These are the primary networks where transactions are processed and consensus mechanisms are implemented. The largest examples of layer one blockchains include Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB chain, and Solana. So another way of looking at layer ones is that these are essentially cryptocurrency coins with their own blockchains rather than tokens that are added on other blockchains. Layer one blockchains provide the core functionalities like transaction processing, 
consensus mechanisms, and security protocols. Bitcoin, for example, uses a proof-of-work consensus mechanism, which ensures a high level of security and decentralization, but isn't the fastest or most scalable. Ethereum is now a proof-of-stake model with Ethereum 2.0 to address cost and scalability issues. Some advantages of layer ones are the high level of security and decentralization, although this will depend on the consensus mechanism that the cryptocurrency project uses. And I did a video on the different proofs or consensus mechanisms that exist in the crypto space that you can find the link to here and in the description. But layer ones also provide a fundamental infrastructure for other layers that we'll look at next. Some disadvantages of layer ones include potentially high transaction fees, slower processing times and network congestion, and therefore less scalability. But again, every cryptocurrency is different and will have different features in the crypto trilemma, with some layer ones being more decentralized, such as Bitcoin, some being more scalable, such as Solana, for example, some having better security, again like Bitcoin, and some with lower fees, such as the BNB chain, if we're just looking at the top four by market cap size again. Let's now move on to layer twos, otherwise known as L2 scaling solutions, because they're designed to tackle the scalability issues of layer one blockchains. And these are protocols built on top of layer one blockchains to increase transaction speed and reduce costs. Some common examples of layer twos include Polygon, the largest by market cap size in 24th place at the time of recording this video with over $4.8 billion. Arbitrum, the roll-up chain, both of which aim to scale on Ethereum and the Lightning Network on Bitcoin. These layer two solutions aim to enhance the performance of layer one by handling transactions off chain and then recording them on the main blockchain, which can reduce congestion and improves efficiency. But the main advantages of layer twos, as we've already seen, are increased scalability and transaction speed and lower transaction fees. And some disadvantages of layer twos include that they rely on the security of the underlying layer one blockchain. And given that they're added to a layer one, this adds a layer of complexity and can lead to potential security risks and vulnerabilities. Next is layer three, which is the application layer and is where users interact with the blockchain through dApps or decentralized applications and smart contracts. So this layer is the most user facing layer and would include DeFi platforms, NFT marketplaces and DEXs or decentralized exchanges that are built on layer twos normally or layer ones. Examples of this would include Orbs, Uniswap, Chainlink that provides reliable data feeds for smart contracts and Aave, the leading DeFi lending and borrowing platform. So these applications leverage the underlying blockchain infrastructure to provide various services. For example, Uniswap enables users to trade cryptocurrencies directly from their wallets without needing a centralized exchange. And the advantages of layer threes are the wide range of applications and services on offer and the innovation that drives the blockchain space with the disadvantages focusing on possible smart contract vulnerabilities, which can be exploited as we've seen many times in the crypto space. So we've looked at layer zero, one, two, and three in this video, with layer zero being the base layer, allowing every blockchain to operate, layer one being the foundation or implementation layer with the largest cryptocurrencies that have their own blockchain, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. Layer two or L2 solutions, which is the additional layer to layer one that sits on top of this to increase scalability primarily. So this can be seen as a third party integration with layer one to essentially improve it. And finally, we've seen layer three, which is the application layer or user interface where the DeFi apps and services sit. And another way of looking at the blockchain layers that exist can be seen here 
and we'll be looking at the bottom layer here first and then going up. So there's the hardware or infrastructure layer first, which is where the blockchain's content is stored, such as the data center or peer-to-peer -peer network. The data layer, which is how blocks and transactions work essentially. For example, the hash, timestamp, nonce, block number, etc. Followed by the network layer, which is how the nodes communicate with each other, otherwise known as the peer-to-peer -peer layer. Then we've got the consensus layer or consensus mechanism. So proof of work, proof of stake, etc. or how blocks are validated. And then through the application and presentation layer, which are smart contracts, dApps, etc. So you can broadly see this following the layer zero, layer one, layer two, and then layer three models covered in this video. But understanding the different layers of blockchain technology is important for those involved in the crypto space. Each layer plays a specific role, contributing to the overall functionality, scalability and security of the blockchain network. From the foundational infrastructure of layer zero to the user facing applications of layer three, these layers work together to create the crypto ecosystem we have today. Or whether you're looking into the security of layer one, the scalability solutions of layer two, or the innovative applications of layer three, each layer is different and worth knowing about, especially as the crypto space continues to grow and innovate in future. And even the IMF put out a statement recently in February 2024, specifically mentioning these crypto layers that we've looked at in this video. It obviously talked about the need to continue to regulate the crypto industry, but acknowledged the high complexity of blockchain technology. And so they highlight the need for international cooperation to regulate crypto assets effectively moving forward. But that ends this video, looking at the different crypto layers, and as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below about it. And if you're interested in more of a tailored approach to your crypto education, and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help and have a great day.